Hello, I'm Joe Whitchurch again, and I'm. this is part two on Scripture memory, how to make it more joyful, more abundant, and more of a blessing in your life and through your life to other lives, and in your prayer life, and your worship, and your witness, and your study and meditation upon God's Word. Um, in this section, let me remind you again of the webpage, ngradiv.com slash, uh, backslash, uh, heart.asp for more information. You can get my little booklet there in PDF form or in HTML form. Um, but you may enjoy getting some coaching via these short videos as well. Hopefully, hopefully they will help you and be of encouragement to you. All of us have had people uh, recite gospel outlines at us. <laughs> The uh, person that learns how to share their faith will sometimes go on to autopilot, and they don't see the person's eyes are glazing over, they're getting the faraway look, and they're not connecting with people personally because they're so focused on trying to memorize that uh, brief summary, if you will, of, of the gospel. Same, same in scripture memory. I remember in college, a friend had done a lot of scripture memorizing in the book of James. And one day at the lunch table, he began to quote it, and I was impressed because I was encouraged by uh, scripture memory and what it's done in my life, even at that time. And he, I uh, prob probably encouraged him a little bit too much. He went on uh, reciting verse 1 and 2 and all the way down to 5 and 6, and some other people were saying, okay, well, okay, that's enough, that's, that's enough, uh, let's eat. And he just kept on going and kept on going, so perhaps proud of his hard work and accomplishment of memorizing this thing word perfect with the punctuation with the colons and semicolons and commas and periods and all the, the footnotes all in the right places and um, but I, I couldn't help but notice from my own memorizing in, in James that uh, James the passage he was actually quoting from actually talks about issues of humility and of service and of wisdom and unfortunately, the way he was reciting in autopilot, irritating people around him instead of inspiring them by the scriptures, um, was actually counterproductive to principles of wisdom and humility. And we don't want to be like that with people. We don't want to be that with the, way with ourselves. We don't want to be like that with the people that we're encouraging in scripture memory either. We want people to have joy uh, in God's word. Conviction, yes. Truth, truth, yes. Truth and grace together. Grace and truth. Jesus was filled with <laughs> grace and truth, it tells us in John chapter 1. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today, though, about in this second section, about acrostics. Acrostics are uh, things that you've used, perhaps, if you're in the United States, to memorize the five great lakes. Do you remember them? You use the word homes to memorize them. H-O-M-E-S. H was Huron, O is Ontario, M is Michigan, Erie, and Superior. And with that word homes, you could remember because it would spell that, that word, that's an acrostic. Um, uh, another one is all cows eat grass uh, for music scales, and every good boy does fine, and, and so forth. We use acrostics. People have used the prayer tool ACTS for a long time. A C T S. I like to use A C C T S. Um, Adoration, spend time in adoring God, that's A. Adoration, C. A confession, a confession of sin. When we see God for who he is, we see ourselves for who we are, and we confess our sins, consecrate ourselves to God and to his service. Then T, uh, thanksgiving, offering God thanks. And then lastly, supplication, intercession, asking for things for ourselves and asking on behalf of other people. Acrostics, we use them all the time in the Christian faith. A, B, C, admit, believe, confess, and so forth. But acrostics are actually used in the Bible. The longest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 119, 176 verses. If you look at each paragraph of that long psalm, you'll see a funny little letter at the top of different uh, verse sections. Um, Aleph, Beth, and so forth. Those are Hebrew Letters in the alphabet in order through the Hebrew alphabet, the way uh, Hebrew children would learn the Hebrew alphabet. But what you may not know is that every verse that follows in that little paragraph after Aleph begins 
with a word that starts with the letter Aleph. And then the next couplet uh, starts with Beth, the second letter in their alphabet. And each verse in that section begins with a word that starts with the, the letter um, Beth, and so forth. So it's a nice little memorizing tool. The end of uh, Proverbs 31 on the, the woman, the virtuous woman, the godly woman at the end there of, of Proverbs, each verse begins uh, one after another in order chronologically through the Hebrew alphabet. A good way of uh, memorizing like A is for apple, B is for bomb, C is for cat, D is for dog, so forth to the English. Did I say bomb for B? I can't believe I did that. That was an ad lib. <laughs> I hope you can live with that. Okay, acrostics for memorizing uh, in Scripture. Um, I'm going to recommend a book to you right now, and you're going to say to yourself, well, why don't I just get that book and let that do all the work for me? The truth of the matter is you need to make your own acrostics. <laughs> and if you have trouble with that, get a thesaurus. It's like a dictionary. It's attached right to it. Words that are mean the same thing, but are different words, similes, and so forth. Um, this is the book. It's called uh, The Acrostic Bible. Barry Huddleston. An excellent book. It goes through every single book of the Bible and it puts them in an acrostic form. This is the book of Genesis. And the title he uses for the book of Genesis is, In the Beginning, God Created the Heaven and the Earth and Man. Uh, you'll notice from that title that there are 50 letters in it and there are 50 chapters in the book of Genesis. And he actually titles and tries to make the title uniquely fit that chapter uh, according to that acrostic. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth and man. Fifty letters. So I, in the beginning, <laughs> inception of the world. In, newlyweds placed in Eden. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool, though. So that's your in. Then in the T, temptation in the fall. Hatred in the first murder. Entire genealogy of Adam. Uh, and, and so forth. In the beginning, building of the ark, eruption of the flood, going from the ark, and so forth. So if you know this acrostic uh, for the book of Genesis, and when somebody asks you, uh, where did Abraham sacrifice his son um, Isaac? And <clears throat> you can turn in your book, I have no, it's Genesis 22. The 22 is um, arrival of promised Isaac is chapter 21, and testing of Abraham's faith. That's when he offered up Isaac in chapter 22. And that's uh, the E and the A of the word created. So 